Good morning. Good morning. Oh, wow, that sounds great. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yeah, well, not that great, but it was good. The first one was great. Welcome to uh, Salem Church this morning. It is wonderful to have you here and worship with us. Uh, and I a special welcome those who are here with us for the first time. We are deeply, deeply blessed to have you here and worship with us this morning. Uh, we, I have a couple of announcements that i like to share with you. Uh, so we are still uh, searching for the right fit for our youth and children ministry. Uh, we did uh, interview a few people. The interview didn't go as well as we were wishing. I uh, believe that all of you might know the perfect candidate, you just don't know. So what it's going to take is uh, to truly spread the word a little bit more. You have friends with children maybe, or older adults that love their grandchildren and they have energy and a passion for Christ and for children. Uh, maybe you can uh, forward to them, the ad forward to them, the job description, uh, which is, by the way, it's now available online in our website and truly help us to find the perfect match for uh, such a crucial ministry uh, at church. Praise if we can, and we'll sing praise to the Lord. Number 2074, we'll sing twice. Shout to the Lord on the earth, let us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of the name. Sense of your joy and the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. Our second hymn, number 2270, I invite our cheerleaders to come up and, <laughs> and please join in, we'll sing this twice. Thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the Lord, and the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. Thank you. Well, thank you. <laughs> okay, our last uh, praise hymn, number 2271 in the black uh, hymnal. Come, come, everybody worship all, all three verses, of our first three verses. Sabbath day, take a rest and think of God. 
fellowship with the prayers song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember the Lord's unending care. Reaching out to love and help people everywhere. Come, come, everybody worship with the prayer of song of praise. Everybody worship, worship God always. Worship and remember your blessings great and small. Give to God in offerings, thanks for all. Come, come, everybody worship with a prayer and song of praise. Come, come, everybody worship, worship God always. Now, if you'll remain standing for the call to worship. <laughs> okay. Today, we gather to celebrate and joyfully sing to our God. Together, share our praises and thankfulness. Come, let us enter into the sacred place, space with praise. You, O oh God, are the holy God, always and forever. You are the eternal one from whom all things come. Come, let us enter into this sacred space with thanks. O oh God, we are your children, created by and with your love. Come, let us enter into this sacred space with joy and delight. Amen. During the events of Easter, and as an introduction to this next beautiful hymn, let's hear the following scripture. From the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And from the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Needing strength for my journey, I knelt at the cross where Jesus once died for me. And I asked, is this the place where hope abides? And this he said to
scripture reading this morning <clears throat> is from Psalm 100. Shout for joy to the Lord. All the earth worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter the gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. For the Lord is good and his love endures forever. His faithfulness continues through all generations. Praise be to God. May God bless the reading and the receiving of his word this morning. So this uh, worship series that we started last week has a key word, and the word is wow. Wow. This is a, a word that we usually repeat when uh, we are happy, when we see something wonderful, unexpected, maybe something that is uh, uh, surprising that fills us with wonder. Wow, wow, this is so great. I hear that all the time. It's one of the first uh, words. In fact, you know what? Now in, in Italian, they say wow, too, because it, there's no translation for wow. Wow is a, a, a mix of feelings, and, and so there is that little thing that we use on the phone, and they use it in Italy, and they all, I can see my my family in Italy telling me, wow, and I said, oh, okay, I thought it was only English, but apparently it's not. So uh, I think most of you know me well enough know, to know right now that I'm not a big sport fan, to say the least. Uh, I really uh, don't really know what's going on in the world of sports. It's just the way that it is. I don't have anything against sport. I just don't have mind uh, anything for it. For some exception, I mean, when Italy plays soccer, then that's an exception. But otherwise, I have no idea what's going on. Well, this week, this past week, I was uh, uh, cleaning or cooking. I don't know what I was doing in the kitchen. And I left the TV in the back. And then all suddenly I hear all this, wow, wow, there was a people, there was a presenter, there was clearly sport going on. I had no idea even what kind of sport was going on. And so because I was interested in the wow, I was thinking about wow experience, I actually ran to the TV and watched what there was the all wow about it. And there was an NBA basketball game going on. And uh, uh, the announcer and the people there clearly were in total wonder and excitement about this guy that I never heard before, Stephen Curry. You probably heard about him and uh, his incredible shooting ability. Apparently, he's the best around. Uh, so what I did is uh, I went online on my computer and I look for him uh, a video so that I could watch it, you know, carefully with my own eyes. And uh, this is what I saw. A chance. Good for him. Off the rim. Curry has time. Three seconds. Curry from half court. These things tend to happen here at Oracle Arena. How many times we've we seen this guy make shots like this? The best shooter that this game has ever seen pulls up from half court and knocks it down. Mama, there goes that man. The best shooter this game ever saw, and here he is. Incredible. Even somebody like me, it was wow for me to say. I can't believe it how far he can shoot right into it. And then, you know, when you look for something on your computer, there is a bunch of little videos that show up on the side that are somehow related. And my attention, my eyes were caught in this little image. It looks like it was a sort of a, an interview to this wow, incredible 
powerful guy. And hear what was going on in the next video. You gonna stand right, you stand right there. I'm gonna okay. sit on you up. Okay. okay. It's entertaining basketball, but it's, uh, <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're both supposed to, uh, you That's know. That's too well, Daddy. I know, hold on one second, okay. Keep quiet. <laughs> um, there's gonna be stretches where you know he plays well, and obviously he did that for his for his uh, his team in the third quarter to really keep him close and keep him in it. And he made some crazy plays that we defended well, um, and we'll live with those shots. You said it again. Did you feel like you needed to do a little bit extra offensively in the fourth quarter to pick this team up and and lead them to the victory? What's wrong? Well. This little girl, how funny she was. So the world is worshiping this amazing athlete, right? The best shooter this game ever seen, and then it comes around his own daughter and say, that's too loud, daddy. Be quiet, daddy. And here goes with the most boring face that I ever seen before, and uh, wanted just to be done. It's not incredible. Well, first of all, what is not incredible is that our own children really are never impressed with anything that we do. That's aside the point. But, and as it's our truth that that is, is pretty much the case. But beside that, it's interesting to see how in front of this incredible guy, right, that the, the world worship, they come from everywhere to watch him, to shoot and then uh, here it comes, a little girl say, you're boring, daddy. This is just not interesting. Be quiet, daddy, that's too loud. I think uh, that we tend to have a lot in common with this little girl, as life goes. I mean, I think uh, we also uh, tend to lose quickly interest and attention and wonder for the incredible vow, that wow that happened in our own life. It may be something that is happening right there in front of you. Something that maybe you see in the creation, something that is happening in your life. But for some reason, uh, not often we are paying attention. And we tend to really be bored out of our mind and don't pay great attention. As I mentioned last week, though, when uh, we lose that sense of wonder and awe for life, for what is happening in our own existence, we cut off two important things out of our existence. One is joy, and the other is gratitude. Now, when uh, we cut off those two such important elements, things get bad. And we do the same thing with, uh, with God. We stop noticing his uh, incredible acts of love and uh, wonder, small and big miracles that might happen all the time. And when we do that, if you notice, sometimes we don't, most of the time we don't, but we tend to uh, become quite dry. And we go through life uh, with a lot of emptiness and entitlement, so a lot of self-centered, self-preoccupation. We get easily irritated and actually very easily anxious about life. And for sure, we tend to become very discouraged about everything that goes wrong. It's not a pretty picture. When we stop to wow, we start to lose a part of our life. This is exactly why it's so important to worship God. I need to worship God because uh, without that, I forget that in my life there is a, a big God, a huge God. And when I forget that, I start living in fear. I need to worship God because without that, I do lose uh, that sense of wonder and uh, gratitude. And sort of I start living and plot through life with the uh, blinders. And I don't see and I don't perceive and I don't receive what's happening. And I need to worship God because uh, my natural tendency is to forget that he is my Lord. He is my Lord. I'm not the Lord of my life. He, he is the one 
that actually lead me through life. Today's psalm that we just heard, uh, Psalm 100, explained very clearly why God is worth of our praise and worship. Let's read again the beginning. For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. Do you mind to join me and read this with me? For the Lord is good, and his love endures forever. This is the reason why God is worth of our praise. You see, everything in life, as you know well, comes and goes. Even the best things don't last. Notice that? We have it one moment, and the next is gone. And then maybe something else great happened, but then it doesn't last. And sometimes uh, we go through life in high times and low times, in darkness, or maybe times of light, in health and illness, time of joy and time of despair. It goes up and down, but there is only one, one thing that lasts forever. One thing is eternal. One thing never changes, and that is God's love for us endures forever. His faithfulness, said the scripture, continued through all generations. Isn't that crazy? It was for the people that came before me. It is for me. It's for my children. It's going to be for my grandchildren, for their children and their children. God is going to be giving this love forever. Everything else is not forever. Everything else comes and goes. But his love, his life-giving love is always forever. He is consistent and faithful and eternal. Nothing, no kind of love, no kind of gift is like that in our life. So the Old Testament, uh, trying to find a word to describe this kind of incredible love, because it's so different from any human love, that they uh, choose a new word. They find a new word in Hebrew to describe this love. And the word is uh, hesed. That is uh, all the positive attribute of God, love, mercy, grace, kindness, goodness, benevolence, loyalty, covenant, faithfulness. All this is the word for love for God that we find in the Old Testament. That means that God loves us almost in a stubborn way. He loves us even if we screw up. He loves us even if we don't even want his love. God will say, I love you, even when you are being totally unlovable. I will love you even when you cannot love yourself. I will love you even when you are at the bottom pit of your life. I love you just as you are. Nothing, nobody could ever take away that love that I have for you, God said to us. Do you know what is the most frequent uh, promise in the scripture? It is, God say, I will be with you always. Always. There is nothing else like that in our life. And as we worship God, we can actually learn, practice how to feel his closeness to us. We feel his presence, his blessing that can then help us to carry through the difficult time. This is the reason why we worship him. Psalm 100, you see that we heard today, were actually sang not by single individual, but it was actually sang together just like we do it. Sing a song together as the people of Israel were entering into the tabernacle uh, that was uh, built before the actual temple was built. And then they kept on singing this Psalm 100 as they built the actual, uh, the actual temple. So this psalm was created clearly for a community of people to be sang, not for a single individual. Shout for joy to the Lord all the earth, Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Can you hear? 
Can you hear? This is not just for me. This is for the earth, for all of you, for all of us. We sing this together as community. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us, and we are his, and we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. We are people, his people together. Israel had a, such a, a great ability, such a great awareness of what a collective worship is about. You know, our culture is so much about privacy and being, living with my own choices and almost my relationship with God, it's my own, my own place, my own thing. And that's how we usually do. Even when we gather in worship, we don't always are able to feel this excitement of being together and the power that takes place when we gather together in worship. But Israel could do that all the time. We are his people. Worship is, uh, in this psalm, primarily a communal experience. My mind went back to not a long time ago, by the way, when uh, during the, actually just a year ago, during the deadliest months of the coronavirus, uh, coronavirus pandemic and the long, never ending lockdown. I remember being here with uh, those faithful guys in the back there, Bill and Gary, Sunday after Sunday after Sunday try to find in my guts all that I could to make a message that could be somehow engaging. But boy, my heart was broken because I was here by myself. I had to engage with the phone this entire time. And let me tell you, I'm not the only one that struggle so much during that time. I know we try Zoom and YouTube and Facebook and thank God for that technology. Thank God for what we were gonna be able to do. Thank God for this friend of ours that were there sticking with me week after week. But the reality was that without the physical presence of each other, worship was just not worship the way that should be. And I know, because I visit people, especially older adults, that were hurt so deeply during this period of lockdown, they are not able to heal back, to bounce back from it. It really changed their mind, their way to live their faith, their way to see themselves. I know, I know that it's kind of comfortable to stay in your pajama, and, you know, in front of that computer. And I also know that I'm uh, speaking to the choir here, but maybe somebody is listening through the power of YouTube uh, tomorrow, the day after. The reality is that as much as comfortable that is, that is now the same powerful worship that call us to gather together. Because you see, when uh, we can, uh, connect with each other, be in communion with each other, we also become in communion with God. The two things are really connected. There's just no substitute about looking in your eyes, holding each other's hands, putting your arms around each other, praying for each other, singing together. There's just no substitute for that. And as worship outline could be a great solution if you are traveling, if you are ill, if you cannot move, really comes back to the reality that the most effective way is to be here in person. Jesus said, as I mentioned to the, to the kids, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Let's put it again on the screen, the scripture. Such a, an important, Important reminder, Israel knew all about communal worship, communal gathering, and when you do that, then the presence of God is here. And then Jesus came and said, here I am. When the two or three are gathering my name, I am there in your midst. I'm actually physically there. 
This is why corporate worship is so crucial for our spiritual life. God is present in a way that he cannot be possibly present in our own living room or in a beautiful place. We all need those other realities. We all need our prayer time in the quiet of our living room. We all need to see God in the creation. But nothing, nothing can come in place of actual physical presence. When we are here, Jesus is always here. We pray him together, brother and sister, he said. You know, we say our father, remember that? There is a reason why Jesus said to say our father, because it's our together at the same time. And every Sunday when we meet for worship, uh, somebody here needs a prayer. Well, this morning, lots of us need a prayer. Somebody is going to come here that needs encouragement. Somebody's going to be here that maybe needs uh, your perspective on life. Somebody might need a, a challenge from you. Somebody needs a word of hope. And the weird thing about that is that when you do that, you receive hope. You receive perspective. You receive a new beginning and, and new life. This is what happened when God is present. That's why worship is so powerful. Worship is let your mind, your spirit, and your body be involved. We use all our senses in worship. And in worship, uh, we can truly do so much more than we can ever think. And together, we make it happen. So when you see here, when you are here sitting, this is not a theater. This is not an entertainment. Even though we try our best to raise the quality of everything we do, this is not something that you come and sit and just sort of, you know, go through like you watch a movie. Worship is presence, is a communal experience. He is being here in so many different ways. So I have four words for you that I found for myself helpful in understanding what worship uh, uh, can become when uh, we put something more than what sometimes we do. And the first word is commitment. Being in worship involves making a choice. And again, here I'm preaching to the choir, but, and I'm deeply, deeply aware of the fact that you, this morning, made a choice. You had many other things that you could do, many important things that you can do, but instead you are here. Now, commitment, like for any relationship in life, it's what holds us together in creating and growing a relationship. Any relationship that is worthwhile requires commitment. You may, to be here, a high priority in your life. Only through that you receive more than what you thought you would. The second word is consistency. Again, such an important word in life and in worship. Unless we are sick or we are out of town, I think the only way to make this experience transforming is to do it consistently. The third word is practice. So worship doesn't need to be perfect but it is a constant practice of the presence of God in our lives. We try, we fail, we try, we fail, we change, we improve, we practice. Everything worthwhile requires practice and exercise. And finally is involvement. As I mentioned before, this is not an entertainment or a movie or theater. This is a place where you bring yourself in worship with music and reading, sometimes with a smile, with a prayer. Somebody sometimes is just simply uh, to talk with somebody, serving in so many different ways. Your presence here is your involvement. You are here, mind, heart, and soul. That is what makes this moment live. When we gather together, again, somebody here could be totally in a great pain. 
Somebody is trying to figure out what to do in her or his life. Somebody maybe lost a family member recently. Somebody might be totally depressed and crashed. Somebody might just had a, a terrible medical report. Somebody was just betrayed. Maybe there's somebody that cannot even sing a song, but you can sing a song for them. You can. You can embrace them in worship. You can be Jesus' presence in their lives by simply be there with them, and you can love them. So when we gather together in worship, we receive this experience of hesed. There's a God, steadfast love become in flesh, something that we can experience with each other. And then when we leave this place, we go back to our lives, we carry that love, that faithfulness right into the world. How oh, well. That's pretty good. That's actually very good. Amen. This time I'm inviting those who are going to help me to serve communion to join me up here. As we prepare to uh, repeat in memory of Christ that this gesture, we are reminded that this is truly a sign of the presence of God. We are in communion with God and we become in communion with each other. And we go back with our scripture at the night in which Christ during the Last Supper, broke bread and said, this is my friend, this is my body that has been given for all of you. So please take this, eat it, and do this in my memory. And the same night, the end of that supper, he uh, lift up the cup, gave thanks to the Father and said, and this is my blood that has been given for you. So please know that this is a new day for you. This is a place of start. This is a place of community. You can count on each other because I am here we do. In the Methodist Church at Salem, everybody's welcome to communion. This has been prepared for all of you. No matter how close or far you are from God today, this is a supper that is for everybody. This bread does not belong to the church or to me, but belongs to God. God is here among us, and he welcomes all of you, all of his children. This is the body of Christ that has been given for you. Carla, the body of Christ given for you. Body of Christ given for you. <coughs> Blood of Christ given for you. Blood of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ given for you. Emily, Father. As we prepare to receive uh, these signs of life and new beginning, may your presence be powerful during this communion that we are about to share with each other together in your name. Amen. Please come. This table has been prepared for all of you. Maggie, this is the body of Christ. That is. You may be seated. This is a time during the service that we are uh, reminded about the power of being together again by our gifts and our time and our talents. And everybody here is rich of those gifts. Among those gifts is also our financial gifts, and they can go far. And 
with the presence of God, they can truly make a big difference in the, our life, in the life of this congregation, and the life of many others that we are reaching out through our gifts. So I'm going to invite you at this time to uh, be uh, using an envelope that is in front of you, unless you already have an envelope or you put cash. The two plates, uh, offering plates, are right, right outside the door, and you can use them to leave your offering in today. And as we prepare to... Uh, Go out into the world, leave this time of communal praise and community uh, worship. May the Spirit of God be with you and keep you, keep you through the week that is about to start and help you to bring love, the love of God into the world. May God bless you all. Amen.